This is the June 30th meeting of the Vicksburg Warren Board of Trustees. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Minister Michelle Johnson to lead us in the invocation, please. Good evening. Hi. It's an honor to be here today to pray. If you would bow your heads with me. Dear Gracious Father, God, I thank you for this opportunity to pray. God, I ask you to be here with the board as they make decisions that drive the destinies of our children. God, we thank you for the protection that you've given our school district, our children, even at home, Lord God, this summer, God. We thank you for your hand of protection around them. And Lord, we thank you for the programs that you've given us, Lord God, the outstanding things that have been done in our community. So we ask you, Lord God, right now to guide and to lead what they're going to discuss tonight God you be here um, among them Lord God and and lead them into the the right decisions that will continue to push our community forward again Lord protect them protect the faculty protect the staff and the children most of all Lord and I ask these things in your son's name amen, amen. amen. thank you, thank you so much for being here Okay, we'll go to uh, C1, the adoption of the agenda. Mr. President, uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda with one correction that we, um, I don't know how what the proper way to word this brings, but to take out of order and handle the 16th section issues um, before the superintendent's report. Okay, Since so we have a large, large agenda and we have a lot of people here that are here for the opening of those bids. Okay, one second. So that's going to be M1. Move M1 and, and take it up uh, right before the superintendent's report. Would that be amenable? Is my motion to accept that agenda? You can, yeah, make a motion to adopt the agenda with that change. I make a motion that we adopt the agenda with uh, the change of moving M1 to be addressed um, right before the superintendent's report. D2 or D1? D, make it D2. D2. And you want it where? And make it D2. D2. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Quick, okay, well, these are actually approval of minutes. So you um, want to the superintendent's report? Just move it to um, be just a new item. Everything else is bumped down, so it'll be oh, a, M1 will just be moved, amended to be in place uh, or following D1. Okay. okay, okay, okay. That's my motion. All right, have a motion on the floor. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? That motion is approved. All right, so uh, Mr. Pratt, will you take the one, please? Yes, I will. So, board members, you have before you the agenda, I mean, the uh, minutes from our last um, board meeting. Are there any uh, additions or deletions to the minutes uh, from our June? I mean, uh, it up. Hold on. Don't let me lie to you. For our May 20th, Friday, May 20th meeting, or 19th meeting, excuse me. Thursday, May 19th meeting. Any additions or deletions? If there are none, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented for May 19th's regular scheduled board meeting. Second motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? C1 is, has been approved. All right, so we will now jump in the agenda to M1. Ms. Lewis, yes. is that you? You weren't quite expecting it this quick, were you? <laughs> Get a layer of you down there. Best I got is a pencil break. Uh, I know. It probably scratched through something, but I shouldn't.
All right, these are the 16 section leases. Our first lease will go in the order that's listed in our packet. The first lease that I've got is for um, 16, 17, 5 East. That's section 16, Township 17 North Range 5 East. And there's a couple of these that are sealed, and I'll need to open the, uh, the packages to determine what section they are. Does not have it written on the outside, so let me set it aside. The only one on the outside that's marked 161715 5 East is this one. Ms. Lewis, do you have a bit amount for some of these? First bid we've got uh, with the bid proposal is from uh, Thomas Sanders, the Thomas G. Sanders, and that's the Sanders Honey Club. Uh, minimum bid on this one was $16,037.50. This bid is $16,037.50. There is certified funds, the amount of 10% of the bid, and this bid does appear to be in order. So we've got one bid on that track. I've got, as I mentioned, two others over here that do not have sections. I'm going to open those to see if they're on the same section. This one is not. section it is. Um, but I do not, uh, the Mount Alvin Club. Is anyone here from the Mount Alvin Club? Mount Alvin Hunt Club. Lamar Barnett, Mount Alvin Hunt Club. It's a bid in the amount of uh, apparently $6,855. No other accompanying documentation. So don't know what bid that applies, what uh, section that applies to. Uh, so it appears that we only have one bid, and that's for the Sanders Hunting Club. That amount is $16,037.50. It does meet the minimum bid requirement, and it does appear to be in order. So the recommendation and the motion, if, if you make a motion that we accept the bid received for uh, Sanders Hunting Club for $16,037.50. Second. We have a motion of the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All right, the next bid that I see is the uh, uh, next track is 16, section 16, 16 North, 5 East. Um, There's two on our list here. Is there a difference between those two? Uh, the first one is, is a $2,500 uh, minimum lease, the other one was $500. $500. I don't know what tracks those are. Um, track two is 25 minutes, 2500, and track three is 500. Okay. 
Okay. I've got is anyone here from Gulf Coast Hunting Club? Gulf Coast Hunting Club. I've got two of these that don't say what track they are, uh, but these two, the one that I just mentioned and this one, just reference 16 section land. And so I don't know if any way we can qualify what tracks they apply to. Um, so 16165. 16, 16, 5. That's one of them in question? That, that's both. The next two are 16, 16, 5. All right, so 16, 16, 5 is, is bisected by I-20. So you got property on the south side of I-20 and property on the north side of I-20. I'm so guessing that the $2,500 minimum is going to be the east half of section that's track 16. Two. That's track 2 east of the golf course. But he's saying that the that bids, the don't, bids don't, don't say what the bids do not are designate. The bids are not documented. Yeah. I got you. They didn't put in, like for instance, the Sanders, we, we identified, they wrote it like they're supposed to them outside the envelope. And that just they've a identified check. exactly what they're bidding on these two. This one has got a check and nothing else, as does this one from the, got the Gulf Coast Hunting Club and the Mount Alden Hunt Club. So is there no bid for this? I just, unless they're here to identify, I can't tell which one it is. Um, that might be just a payment. It didn't say, you know, sealed and did not say uh, what it indicated on there. So that one that, that just shows the check, that just might be our payment. Uh, it shouldn't be because it should be based on the advertisements that we did. Um, okay. Let's skip now. I've got another one from Lincoln Lumber Company. And they've identified section 15, 14 North, 4 East. And that does not match with any of the ones that we've advertised for bids. <laughs> Nope. So uh, I'm afraid that one's going to have to be rejected too. All right, moving on to the very last one, section 2117 North 4 East. I do have one bid for that. $950. This is care of the Knob Hunting Club, which appears to be, which is $21,750. Uh, but there's no sheet with it. I don't know what happened this, this time around, but there's no sheet with it. It appears that they're bid, bidding $9,500 because they got 10% certified funds here, but they don't have a bid sheet for me to be to know if they're actually bidding that amount of money. So that bid, bid does not appear to be in order. Appears not so none to be. of the other three we have bids that are in order. We got people in the Anybody Benny Grant? No. Uh, we got a bid on track four. You said that was the last one? For Goat Hill Hunting Club? Uh -huh. Do you have sixteen eight four West? It's not identified as I just got a check. I've never had this. I don't think I've ever had this happen. People just send checks in. They didn't, no, they didn't fill out a bid sheet. I put mine in an envelope with a letter filling out the temperature from the section. Put it on the envelope. Must have missed it here. No, it was hand delivered. Okay, wait, was it? Yeah, it bids appear to be in order so my recommendation is that we re-advertise and open them at next month's meeting for the other sections the sanders sanders one's been approved but the other ones uh, we have another person in the audience that says they've given you a check bid on the 16th section land east of the golf course i hand delivered certified check 
with everything filled out, name, uh, naming the hunting club on the outside of it, and the section it was delivered personally. Can we check the office? To see? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I would say so we need at least move the table, get a phone table call. off, either table them. Uh, that's probably the best thing to do until we get some Make a motion we table the selection of the remaining bids until we've had time to research the give the payments. Do I have a second? Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries to table the M1, the remaining M1 items. Aren't y'all glad y'all didn't stay? <laughs> y'all didn't have to stay I know, right? <laughs> for that. Okay, uh, superintendent's report. We're at E1. Um, it was really busy, um, and I'm not going to read all these things, but I am going to let you know that there was a couple of uh, items to note. Um, we have been selected for the National Center of Excellence in Education. Uh, they're a research organization, um, and they are doing, they did an interview with us, and they are citing us as part of their research uh, for the data moves that we've seen. Um, so that's pretty neat to be called out by a national organization. Um, I also got to attend the Mississippi Educational Law Conference, and I was very happy that we paid someone to do that work. Uh, <laughs> It was uh, it was good to to hear any of the updates, but there was no uh, uh, nothing that that I think was uh, uh, much different than we saw. Um, also got to attend a uh, Superintendents Alliance re uh, retreat. It was a workshop where we looked at uh, some some data um, and, and national trends that are coming through education, and I got to meet some incredible leaders and in, uh, network there. Um, and then uh, I would like to uh, move on to the recognition part, if that's okay. Yeah. Mr. Perez, um, we had uh, a, a, you know, a, a list of retirees that, that left us and uh, we were happy to honor them at a, uh, a meeting we had uh, towards the end of the year over at AOI. Uh, it was uh, well attended and uh, we appreciate all of those that served our district. Um, we have a special recognition for this particular board meeting. Um, we wanted to, even though we've had an event for them, we wanted to uh, openly state who our district teacher of the year uh, is, and it was Jaslyn Harris uh, from South Park. Our district teacher assistant of the year was Walter Goodwin from WCI. Uh, district parent of the year was Trey Smith from Redwood, and the district administrator of the year uh, was Dr. Terrence. Resolution. Whereas Amy Nicole Washington Swartz departed this life on May 23, 2022, after devoting 13 years of teaching the children of Warren County, impacting the students of Warren Central Intermediate School, Vicksburg Junior High School, Warren Central Junior High School, and River City Early College High School. Whereas Swartz graduated from Alcorn State University, where she received her master's degree in secondary education with endorsements in English, guidance counseling, psychology, and social studies, and whereas Swartz touched the lives of hundreds of children with her passion for teaching and authentic caring for each and every student in her classroom and school, and her legacy of commitment and dedication to the community has enriched those fortunate enough to know and work with her. And whereas Swartz leaves behind her loving husband, Charles Swartz Jr., her beloved children, Charles Swartz III and Destiny Swartz, and other family members, friends, students, and colleagues. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Vicksburg Warren School District hereby honors the life and work of Amy Nicole Washington Swartz, a dedicated teacher, and recognizes the valuable contribution she made to the well-being of her students and the community. And uh, we'd like to uh, ask the board to approve that uh, with a vote so that we can uh, get the I make a motion that we uh, unanimously accept this resolution, recognizing uh, Ms. Washington Schwartz's dedication to our district. Second, Coach. Second. All right. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, and with that, that concludes my part of the board meeting. All right. We'll move on to F1 project updates. Jason, are you or Mark online? Hey, Mr. Slate, Mr. Jason. Hey. All your. So, good, 
Good evening, board. Thank you guys for letting me call in. I have uh, I have been pulled in a million directions. Um, we got a lot going on um, uh, in the district. Uh, you've got the update in front of you. Uh, we do have a couple action items at the end um, that we'll talk about, and, and I'll kind of hit a couple of high notes. Um, just kind of going through the update. Um, we did get uh, the electrical items completed at Vicksburg High School. Um, we'll get with uh, Bill and his guys to make sure we get a back check on that. And, and obviously, uh, meet the principals and the staff to make sure we're good there. So I know that was kind of a lingering item, and I'm glad we got that uh, addressed. Um, you've got a Warren Central update. Uh, you've been getting those regularly. Um, it is much more detailed and, and in addition to here. Um, I would tell you that we are hitting some of the same struggles that we have with building material. Um, getting to the site from, from red iron to, to anything that's got resin in it, but they are working. They're making progress. Um, I would love to see it a little faster. Um, I know Mark has been over there meeting weekly um, with the contractor, and about every other day he's over there trying to figure something out in the field. Um, so, but they are, they're working with Mr. Green, making sure it'll be ready um, and, and safe when kids come back in August. I generally stop there if anybody has any questions from Warren Central. We'll kind of field them now because I know that kind of that's a very important project right now. Uh, yeah, my question would be um, I know <laughs> the red iron's been ordered, but why was it not already ordered before and why was it not already here? We've had this project going on for how long and they just now realized we need to order some steel? Really? So it, it, it has been ordered and, and maybe ordered was the wrong word. Uh, we keep getting. Uh, I, I don't want to call them whatever they may be, uh, inaccurate statements, hearing what we want to hear, being told what we want to hear, or other type thing, it's, it's the fabricator. It, it has been ordered for quite some time. It just has not been fabricated. Um, so we've got pieces of it that we believe are still another four weeks out, um, which are going to be critical to getting that middle um, installed. So that delay is on the contractor, and are we going to get making them fully aware that that's theirs. And are they willing to work to make up to meet the deadlines they've already they've already promised? They, they state that they are, and, and they've had the manpower on site. It's, it's, I know a lot of it's been on the inside. That they have been working and, and showing that effort, um, especially here that our kids have been out the month of June. Well, you know that's a, you know having all that heavy equipment on site to build the rest of that agora uh, with the children not there right now. It's essential to do as much as that they can to to minimize Agreed. the impact and. They're wasting good time right now. But they are missing their time. You're 100% you're right. And we're the um, ones going to be inconvenienced by that, not them. So I want to make sure they're, that we're impressing on them that we would uh, uh, appreciate them stepping up the effort to make up for this lost time. Yes, sir. That, I, I agree with you. Um, and and we're we are pushing them desperately hard because um, I'm, <laughs> I'm tired of working outside on that project, too. It's, <laughs> It's, it's time to, to get a refund. It is. Well, J Jason, this is Kimball. Can we, as a board, be given some type of uh, aesthetic contingency plan as to what that could look like yes. come the first day of school um, to where it can be as the best it can be instead of like it has been for the last two years? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, Mark Russell, myself, and uh, Mr. Green have actually um, been kind of reviewing that. Um, and, and the comment, the kind of the general comment is that kids cannot come back as, as this project was left. Um, but as far as the detailed plan, I think we'll know a lot more um, where they are when we have our OAC meeting after the 4th of July. And I think um, that meeting is actually July 5th, Tuesday the 5th. Um, and at that meeting, we will have a pretty good plan of, of what it's going to look like. Yeah, it would be nice if we, uh, due to the fact that they're behind, um, it would be nice to, to remove, I know they've removed a lot and cleaned up a lot in the front of the building, uh, getting the parking lot ready, but all the stuff they laid down on the old band practice field, at some point in time, we need to stop looking like construction zone. Um, Agreed. Maybe they need to move that off to the side of the building, get it out of the front of the building. We've looked at it for four, three years now. I think I'm tired of looking at it. I, 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 I will and make I, that. And we expect that. the grass and facilities to be maintained unlike it has in the past. Um, or we're or we're gonna or we're gonna maintain it and we're gonna charge them for it. That's correct. I like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other Warren Central concerns? No. <clears throat> Jason. Yes, sir. Mr. Sturgeon. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, sir? 
I am well, thank you. I, I know you, you kind of skimmed over VHS, but I, it's not on the the um, board update, but it, we were having problems with the roof leak in the auditorium, and I was just curious as to have we rectified the roof leak in the auditorium? I will be honest with you, it's been about uh, two weeks since I have walked in the auditorium um, and put my eyes on that. Yes, sir. Um, we've been getting updates and, you know, kind of, we call them uh, deficiency lists. I will have to look. I, I, I just, I can't answer that off the cuff. I just, I don't know of anything. I know it was a major issue at one time because we had ceiling tile and some damaged seating and, and what have you. Um, I believe it was rectified, but before I would say 100%, I need to put my eyes on it. Thank well, you. Thank I, you, sir. Jason, there, that, there was that leak that was caused by that exterior awning situation. Has that work been done? Yes, um, and the rain we've had, I believe most of that water is, is now in, in the designated pipe. Um, we have not gotten any reports where we were having uh, that, that flooding that we were. Okay. Um, so, and, and what we've had recently has been a pretty good test of it. Yeah, no doubt. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thanks for remembering that. All right, Jason, uh, you want to move on to Academy of Innovation? Sure. Um, Yes, two weeks ago we had uh, at AOI we had our one year walkthrough. Um, we identified obviously the uh, deficiencies that have popped up within the contractors' one year period. Um, got those things on the list. Contractors working them off. Um, obviously, we've got uh, some big picture items that we're still working through with uh, Briggs and Council on that to uh, get that project closed out. Um, Bomar, um, the exterior grant project. If, if you guys have not been by, it's really cool to see the guys work. Um, they have pressure washed, I'd say, probably a little closer to 60% now uh, of the building. Um, they've repaired a lot of the plaster that was damaged, and they have also repainted, not repainted, it's actually the first coat of paint um, on the new building, kind of bringing the whole campus together as kind of one uniform color. Um, it, it's going to be great. It, it looks really good. It, it's clean. Um, I'm actually excited um, as that thing continues to go. So. So far, so good, and archives and history is happy as well. Uh, Bobana site work, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and then Beechwood renovations, uh, Briggs may have some comments there, but that, that one is still uh, kind of hanging in the, uh, the balance of being able to close out just uh, a few disputes we're having with the contractor uh, there. But as far as updates, that is kind of it with Warren Central uh, leading the pack and then obviously the Bomar Grant um, project trying to knock that out before kids return in August. And if no questions there, we'll talk about the action items. Go ahead. So the, the, the first action item we have is, is A, it's Vicksburg High School. Um, we've talked about this one a little bit and uh, Mark has gone back and got some revised pricing. We've met with different subs and vendors um, and talk with leadership. Um, basically, you have three options uh, on that project. And you'll see option one on your sheet, and that's for BCT, and that's from a, a company called Craft Croswell. That's pulling up the chairs where there's bare concrete, putting in uh, uh, BCT and tying it back in. Option two is substantially more $124,000 um, and that is the same work, except instead of BCT, it would be putting in luxury vinyl tile um, and tying everything together. That's a very expensive option. And then what you see, option three, I've got epoxy paint over there in the side. That's a little bit of a hybrid, and we'll walk through it and answer any questions you have. So with option three, it is a, um, that quote is from a company in Vicksburg called Custom Flooring. Uh, the scope of work, they would be removing all the chairs. Um, they would be putting in BCT where the chairs are like the other contractors, but what they proposed and actually like it as an idea, the risers, which is the area where, where the concrete kind of turns up and goes to the next step, if you will, um, keeping those epoxy paint, um, obviously getting some BCT to adhere to that um, would be a, a little more uh, uh, cumbersome and then you know, a, a maintenance and upkeep issue for Bill. So the option there is to paint those with epoxy um, in the riser areas. But that price for all of that, BCT where the chairs are, painting the risers with epoxy, uh, was 40692 
Maybe I'm so that, confused, but I don't understand why it's so much different. You're still putting VTC on the, you're not putting it yes. as much and you're just putting like the walkways is, is painted or why is it such a difference? Yeah, well, that's what we've been trying to find out. Yeah, and, and I'm going to be completely honest. You craft Croswell, uh, they're a very large contractor. Um, they're the one that uh, they, they did the work with Thrash under their con under the construction bid um, project that we had. I, I will say it loosely. Sometimes you, you get contractors that give you, uh, I really don't want to fool with it price. We have asked the contractor to go back a couple times. I know Mark has had numerous conversations and walked the site two or three times. I've met with them. That's their price. Um, Mark has actually talked uh, in, in depth with the uh, people at Custom, actually, uh, to the point today, talking with Miss Donna. Um, they're comparing their scope, and he has numerous times asked her, are you sure? Have you missed anything? No, I've got it. So this is VTC everywhere. Take the chairs up, wall-to-wall -wall VTC. With the exception of the yep. risers between the steps. And that'll Face be painted the that's correct. but nobody walks on that's it. Your foot kick, your, your yeah. toe, toe yeah. kick here. Yeah. Yeah, you should have that full proposal, and they've got that, that description, remove reset chairs, paint risers, stand and prep the floor for VCC, and, and on and on. They've got some date things in there because they, they quoted this in uh, in May. Obviously, they won't be able to meet, you know, start work May 26th. But anyway, we can, you know, review that as we go. Jason. Yes, sir. How... Confident are you in the disparity of the price, but yet the quality of the work? In other words, so, was, yeah, the materials are the same. We we have asked everybody to bid the same flooring products, it, it, and it doesn't matter who would be putting in the material. The material is the same. It's like buying a Chevy, and it doesn't matter what dealer you go buy it from. Uh, this contract is a local guy. I, you guys have used this company within the district on other things. Um, they don't like working for, uh, for large general contractors, and I've seen pictures of some of their stuff. Um, I've just never personally worked with custom flooring. Okay. Um, so I would tell you, I I don't know. Now, I, I, Bill may be able to answer that um, if he is there. I'm not sure if he is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you well, you. You've answered half of my question. I preach, well, more than half, three-fourths of it. We've used them before, and the material is the same, except the price is different, which is great. Correct. Right. Gotcha. Thank you. And it's my understanding, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Cassandra, and she's not here, but um, this is not part of the bond money, right? Uh, this that, that is correct. This is, a, this is something that we were... I, Guys, procure pricing on. So, so part of part of this would be y'all deciding whether y'all want to do this out of a 16 section interest purchase or a fund balance. Uh, you've got money in both. Okay. So, with the information, do, does this board have enough information now to make a decision? If so, what's the pleasure of the board? Can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. uh, Jason, did you get bids on? Like you asked for bids on all three options and custom or uh, craft croswell gave you just the bct and lv2 lvt bids and this other group gave you just the modified bid is that right that that's correct that's okay. exactly right okay just making sure we because the, the at least the the first two are going to be in the in the bid category range it appears and the other one's going to be just two quotes um, correct so, Mr. Attorney, you are in agreement with the uh, bid process as far as you. It's legal. Okay. Mr. President. Yes, sir. I'd like to, uh, before we make the uh, decision, get Bill's opinion. That's entirely, that's probably a good idea. Bill, are you on? I know he's been out because he had some. I don't think the procedure. Done. Yeah, well, you know, contingent upon. Yeah, you know, Bill. Bill from thing? the beginning. You know, we, we. This has been an issue since the day I saw it, um, and the floors, uh, surface area is inadequate uh, in the way it was resurfaced with the bid and bond money. Um, we found a couple different solutions, which didn't make us much happier, to be honest with you. 
Uh, so inside that, the only thing Bill has said repeatedly is he don't want floor surfaces that you're walking on to be uh, painted because you're talking about a maintenance nightmare. Uh, to paint underneath those chairs, it would have to be done every single, every single year. year. And you're going to paint on top of all the chairs. Terrible. So any solution that we have, he, he wanted from the beginning either to leave that area alone or to put VCT there. So, well, I think if we approve this, we ought to approve it with the contingency, seeing as Bill's not here, with the with the review of Bill, uh, our maintenance department to verify that it, it meets their standards and they're good with it. Just yeah, because we're not the expert. How good is this bid through? What is the date? Bid three. Uh, let's say. I, I would um, gener generally a 60 days unless they notice something on there. Um, so I would say you got to be able to review this mid, 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 mid end of July. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if I may, Mr. President, yes, sir. I, would like to, I would like to make a motion that we accept option three with the contingency that we talk with Bill to give us some type of uh, report on custom flooring and the business that they've done with the school. And if it is satisfactory, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve option Three for forty thousand, sir. And and to be paid from oh oh, and to be paid from sixteenth uh, section. Sixteenth section. Interesting. Right, we have a motion on the floor. Good yeah. ask questions. For, the the satisfaction you want from Bill is to provide that to the superintendent, so we don't have to wait for another board meeting. Correct. Correct, sir. Okay. Thank you. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Coach. Coach. All right, I have uh, all eyes and the motion carries. All right, Jason, you move on to Bovina. All right, this one's a little interesting, and uh, it's a bid, and generally we have a recommendation to award uh, for a bid, but I, I felt it'd be prudent for us to talk about it, and um, I will kind of base my recommendation on you guys. So. Obviously, we've had some drainage issues um, on that site, some paving issues, and, and kind of a, a litany of other things there. So the base bid for that work, for correcting the drainage around the building, um, redoing the asphalt work, um, doing a lot of underground piping, uh, just getting water away from the building in general. Um, we received bids on that uh, for $214,150 by Southern Paving. Um, you got they were, they were about three percent higher than the than the budget we had, so we're okay there, um, and felt comfortable with that. So there were two things though that we were asked to price as alternates, just because we knew we were getting close to the end of bond issue money. Alternate number one was seven thousand dollars. So if you would imagine if you were standing at that building with your back to I twenty, looking at the front door, you've got a sidewalk that is running east to west. Uh, we do have to cross that sidewalk a couple times with pipes. Um, obviously, we were going to cut out that section and put in pipe um, and then pour that little piece back. But we took the alternate for uh, asking the price the alternate for $7,000. We would repair out and replace that sidewalk in its entirety. Okay? So that's alternate number one. Alternate number two, however, is is... We'll, we'll just talk about it. Um, so the entry drive, which you do not have in the base bid, is where you turn like you are coming into the school. We call it the pothole road, whatever you want to call it, right? You, you've had sinkholes there. That work all the way up to about where the, the portable building is, which is the, the, the property line. So from the entry all the way up to about where that building is, if you could vision, it's not within the base bid. We did ask them to price redoing all of that asphalt, um, correcting the potholes and, and redoing the asphalt. That price was almost $79,000. Um, we spent a lot of time with Bill and um, actually Briggs was involved with it. Um, here's the issue. So if you spend $80,000 on that, the, the reason that road is in the condition that it is in is due to the condition of Colk and Water District's uh, main water supply that runs under that road. As it deteriorates in a, in, in a section, they'll dig it out and replace that section. We talked with them, talked with the county. They stated they didn't have funds to redo that water line its entirety. Mm -hmm. So if you 
spend that $79,000 to redo that, Bill's incredibly concerned that it's only a matter of time before it blows out and then the county's in there putting a patch on your brand new road again. So that being said, that's kind of the presentation of, of Bovina and we were just making sure we had accurate numbers for you guys to make a decision on. So we never fix it because they might have, I mean, you see what I'm saying? I agree with not fixing it and wasting your money, but what do you, I mean, we're. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as, do we own the road? Not, not that portion, no sir. Okay. So why is the county not fixing it? Yeah. And they say that they don't have the money. So they want us to foot the bill. And then. Correct. And they want to blame us for raising taxes. So just make sure we got all that right. <laughs> Thank you, Miss <Ms>. Bullard. <laughs> well, in, in to think about this, if we if we stop at our property line, we're going to be driving off beautiful asphalt onto junk. Right. So, so yes, you're, you're let me ask a question: How much does it cost? To, how much does it cost us to replace the water line? Oh, I'm just asking no. a dumb question. I, oh. I didn't even have that had that in in the mix of things. I mean it. I'm glad you didn't. It would be it would be steep because that is a I want to say that's an eight inch main. Oh, it's a, and you're talking about shutting off water to communities for a period of time. It's it's not an easy project, but if if Bill was in there, he'd stand up and jump and tell you yeah. well, how bad do, it is. Could we do something like I mean to make it a little nicer, a slag with spray it with tar, something other than just having the pothole central again. I mean, you're, you're darn if you do, yep. you're darn if you don't. I mean, I, I agreed. I don't want to waste $80,000. They're going to go dig it up tomorrow. But I mean, I also don't want to build a brand new parking lot up there. You know, we have a, we'll have a school on the hill that you got to go through. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is you're going to go through, through gravel, road, gravel road to get to that's got yeah. potholes you lose a car in. I, that's I concur, change. sir. So but, what do you, do? What do you think we ought to do? But I, I, I do have a problem when we've asked them to do things it's always that's yours exactly. you repair it so why are we going to repair their I, I won't use the word garbage but their street and then like bill assumes that maybe two months from now a pipe bursts and we have repair something that now they got to come in and maybe we need to put a sign and then it's over it's going to be back with potholes maybe we need to put a sign we got to come back and read potholes that the school district's um, maintenance starts here <laughs> please we, dial this number to complain right, from here to here okay. please dial this number to complain unfortunately we can't yeah whatever we put down there is is theirs it's yeah. not ours yeah, yeah. So. And, yes right let, let me interject something here in in briggs maybe maybe you can tell me legally my understanding is that water line is not even the county. Is that correct? That is correct. Not the county. Okay. It's culpable. So we're talking, it's, it's, it's really Warren three County. entities. It's Vicksburg Warren School, the Warren County Board of Supervisors, and the road, quote unquote, and then Culkin's water, water line. District. Did That's I say that right, Barry? Right. Mm -hmm. three entities. Gotcha. Okay. But the location of that so water line is probably lying within the county right of way. So it's, it is. Yeah. It is. According to the survey. Hmm. What do you so do? So if we spend everything but the 40, but excuse the 80, me, but the 80, 78. 85, we're going to be driving off of our pretty parking lot onto a cruddy road. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's coming the other way. You're going to be bouncing off of there coming onto your nice one. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, w I would like to speak, though, to the kind of the urgency that the, the paving and the drainage project at Bovina is is needed. And Mr. Sheely, you can kind of echo that a little bit. I mean, y'all know, the, the, I bet you've got what coming in right now. <laughs> well, I'll make a motion to approve the 214-150, but I, I'm not going to approve the 78. I, I, I think alternate number one is an incredibly good price. It's, it's the district's money. I think that is, I, Bill couldn't do that sidewalk for that. So the so option. So, the, so alternate one and the low bid. I, I make a motion to approve those two. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve the original two fourteen one fifty and alternate one to cost us seven thousand dollars to do the front sidewalk. 
Uh, question, Mr. President. Yes, sir. The um, the 124 is is what is alternate one. Yes. Not to, which, that go down. You're on, you're still sitting up, up on the high. Um, the yeah. Section B. Come down to B. B. Come down to B. To B, Jim. B. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the motion that, was that, to that's to pave the the the. Parking lot. That's the 214, okay. and then and the, the 7 is the sidewalk. Is to fix oh, okay. the sidewalk. Okay. We're not approving to pave a road that's going to get beat up. And okay. <clears throat> okay. Can okay. You? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There's a motion and a second. All in favor to approve B, I guess that's BI1 and BI. I suppose that's what that looks like. It looks the low like end plus I the alternate one. one. Alternate one. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Can I, do we have any other alternative to approach the county again and have a conversation with the bridge? Rich, you've been in that choir, Meyer. Can you, is that something that needs to go in executive session to talk about? Or um, I don't know about just approaching the county is not an executive session issue, but I mean, it may be. Uh, I mean, I'd be glad to go talk to, to Kelly and or someone at the board and ask. Earlier, so, you know, talk to them about the need to. Um, fix the property while we're spending all this money on the parking lot and the entrance into the school. Um, I haven't been out there in a long time. It, it's, it sounds like it's a horrible shape. Um, I remember right. It was worse than... I live on three miles of gravel roads and it was worse than it. If we approach them, it would say, if y'all get the base ready, we don't mind paying the 78000 and getting it covered but just don't throw just don't throw it all over right. yeah. but also if we could have an agreement that if you do cut it to fix it we want it put back the way it was well, they're not gonna <laughs> if we're paying for it I mean yeah. they're not going to fix yeah, it they're not gonna, if they don't do it now because that's and water they'd be putting it back the way it was and they're certainly huh? not right they just said they didn't have any money yeah I'm a table alright B1 you mean M1 oh untable yeah. okay I want to make a motion we untable M1. Are we through with the... So we done with, with Jason? Yes. I'm, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Huh? With Jason, thank, thank you very you much. Make a motion. Hey, we thank you. Y'all have a happy fourth. Thank, thank you, Jason. Thank you, too. All right. Motion's on the table to un uh, untable M1, which is the 16th section B at openings. Can I get a second? A second motion. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Uh, motion carries. Back to me. Yep. Back to you. Apparently, we've got some more information. And I'm going to say this before I open these. That probably going to recommend to you that uh, we take these under advisement because I don't know there are people here that obviously know what happened to them some of these other people that are not here may have had the same thing happen to them but uh, I, I, if we can find out from our 16 section manager that there was no other information on these other three or four checks that we got then then I would say go with if these are all proper go with these but if not I would move that you take them take recommend that you take them under advisement so we can ensure that the other people that are not here didn't have the same thing happen to them that some of these folks had happened. But with that said, um, but in doing that, we wouldn't receive any more bids. No, no, uh, unless unless we just decide there's too much confusion and we just re-advertise all of them, and then these uh, folks, unfortunately, we just have to resubmit them. No, but time. what I'm saying is the, the bids we received to make sure that we have all the proper information and which ones they're going to versus accepting any new ones. We wouldn't be accepting any new ones for these. We would only be clarifying the information you currently have. Possibly, but if, if we're not sure, if somebody says that we didn't, you know, if we have somebody that reports that, yeah, I submitted the information just like a couple of these guys did, and we find out that somehow it got misplaced. Then we need to do it all over. Then I just, it's a, it's a lot easier to re-advertise, and I'd hate it for these guys that may have to submit another bid in again, and there are other people too uh, in this process, but better to do that just to make it fair somebody then you all you authorize one of these to get the bid and then somebody else comes along and says i submitted my stuff too and then we find out they did and then we've got to try to reverse all that but do we need to reveal their bid then if we're gonna if that is a possibility do we need to let the public know what these guys bid on this property if you don't want me to uh we can just stop right now and, and move that we re-advertise for next month this could be nice. better it could be better for these guys because they're not going to Everybody's going to probably know at least what the bids were when they start. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't find out that these other people just, you know, submitted theirs and somehow it got messed up. Uh, they just didn't do what they were supposed to do, is submit a bid sheet. 
All right. Do we have to do all these at the same time? Why can't we accept the Sanders bid and accept these bids that are in order? We've accepted Sanders already. Right. That's been done. I'm just saying, can we? If you do not have another one for one that's in order, but he's got checks that he didn't my, know what they're for. My problem is I got a couple of checks, just like maybe one of them said. I got a check over here. I think I have a bid sheet that says what they were bidding on it. And I don't know what section it is. Would that default not be a rejection of that because it bids out of order? Yeah, I mean, that bids that out of order. mean they didn't do if, their. If, but, it, if that is in fact true, yes, right. it would be. But didn't you open order. the envelopes and they weren't in with the envelopes? Well, the, these three that we just got oh. that we could open were not with the initial stuff. Oh. Okay. They just found these back in the office. Oh. And my concern is there may be something else back in the office. Our 16th section manager's not here. If we wake up tomorrow morning and she comes in and says, oh, yeah, somebody else submitted it, and I'm sorry I stuck it in the drawer, uh, which is, I hope didn't happen, then we've got the same problem that we're already dealing with. And I've asked her, you know, those are the three that she uh, had. Uh, back in May. And then we just, you know, the ones that we gathered, uh, mm -hmm. you have those. So. So you're assuming there are no other ones? I, I am. Um, you know, can't say 100%, but again, you know, I just, I asked her, I texted her, and she said that, that was, those are the three that she collected uh, and had in the, uh, in the back of the office. So uh, that's all she collected. Miss Lewis, Miss Lewis, would anybody else accept bids? In your office? Uh, maybe for this week or, or I mean, would anybody else accept the bids? Like if I come uh, in and we, just. Well, all the bids that I know that came to me, but uh, yeah, in the front, the front office um, would receive those, those came to. Uh, what, right, well. right, which could be pertinent, pertinent to what uh, our attorney is saying sure. is that it could be sure. somewhere else stuck in my office. Sure. And I may not be 100%. right, right. So, what's the pleasure of the board? Hey, I'm not a I, I would let's do this. Um, I'm going to ask that you just take this back, um, table it, um, and then, you know, worst case scenario, either we get back if I can find out, and we have something more concrete that we know there's nothing else. We could open up at the end of the meeting, or we could just re-advertise. There's not going to be an off. There's not an auction process in this, guys. Um, uh, that we're doing on these, unless the board instructs me otherwise. And I don't think they have. We didn't do it on. Well, Sanders only had one. You got to have three to have an auction anyway. Um, and I don't think we've got three for for any of these tracks um, to have an auction. But we don't traditionally do that on hunting, fishing, and leases anyway. So what's going to change between now and the end of the meeting? So I guess my question. You no, said but nothing between now and the end of the meeting, but it's like the president said, if we put these bids out here, we get somebody that tomorrow says, well, All it, just seems, awful, it just seems awfully odd to me that we got four checks over here. We've never had this happen. I've right. been doing this for 14 years, and I've never had four checks come in with nothing else attached to them. So and they're even, weird dollar amounts, right? Even, they're not even dollar I mean, amounts I don't know that match. What yeah. they are. I mean, almost always we have a bid sheet right. and a check with them. Well, so our, our position then is that those checks that did not comply with the procedure is not a valid bid anyway. But we don't know that there's not any more in the front office. Is that what Since we're saying? Since we had three that just showed up, right? It seems awfully odd. If we'd had one of these, I'd say the person just messed up their bid. But and maybe maybe all of them did. Maybe they just all messed up on the bids. It just does seem all the odd to me. We have that many. But I'm fine. If y'all want to go forward and open these, uh, I can't sit here and say definitively that you don't have somebody that comes in and says, I submitted it. And, and uh, you know, if they want to challenge us, we just have to fight that challenge later on. I would rather do that in fairness to the people that are here. Open? And yes. And if we end up getting a black eye somewhere else. I mean, we already got one. This is the worst thing we've run into. So. Is that what the board, board would like to join those? We've already got the black eye. Yeah, this is embarrassing. Board, ready to proceed? Do we need to make an action on it or just tell me to get to go? Yeah. Well, Y'all remove it from the table. Yep. You, we did. You vote, I guess unless you vote up otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we've got one bid from section... 16165 from WR Hunting, it appears, from the envelope. 
Somebody here from WR Hunting? Okay. Same same property that you've leased previously, I take it. Any of uh, we've got a bid. The minimum bid is $2,500. This bid is $2,500. There are certified funds in the amount of $250, 10% of the bid amount. That bid appears to be in order. Let me see if there are any other bids that... There do not appear to be any other bids. This bid appears to be in order. So if you'd like to move to uh, approve the bid for WR Hunting Club, R. Kent Campbell. He didn't want to do it. Campbell. All right, then what's the pleasure of the board? I make a, I, I make a motion assuming there's no one else here that bid for that. <laughs> <laughs> that we accept the bid for WR Hunting uh, for in the, in the amount of $2,500. For section sixteen sixteen five, uh, that's track one or two. True, that's track two. Isn't it? Okay. All right. There's a motion. Can I get a second? A second the motion. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No Sturgis. Motion. Did the clerk say? The clerk said no. You said no. Uh, okay, I'm going to vote aye. So that will carry. Sorry, you said yes? Yes. Okay, next bid is also the other track, 1616 5. Minimum bid on that is $500. We accept the bid for five hundred dollars for uh, six, section sixteen sixteen five track. Was this three for Mark J. Cheney? Second the motion. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No Sturgis. And I'm going to vote yes on that one also. So the motion carries, and we're moving on now to 16.84. Okay, 16.84. This is for 2117 North. No, uh, which one is this for? Uh, for Go Hill. I'll go Hill, okay. 1618 Okay, what's the pleasure of the board? We only received one, one bid. One bid. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid for 1618 for um, Andrew, Andrew Freeman for $10,500. Second the motion. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. No Sturgis. And I'll vote yes also on that one. And we are now to 21174. The only bid that I've got that appears to be on that one is not in proper order. There is certified funds, as I mentioned earlier, 
an amount of $950, which typically represent 10%, but uh, there's no bid sheet with it, so there's no way for me to determine what their bid is. So this bid, if it is a bid, is not in order. Do we need to make action to reject it? Yes. I'll re re so we reject it, we're re re advertising it. Re right. make a motion that we had, that we had reject the one bid uh, improperly submitted for 2117 North 4 East. Is that so correct? And re-advertise. And, and re-advertise. Second. Second coach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Gentlemen, thank y'all and we apologize for the snafu. That's okay. Do, do y'all mail off the rest of the stuff that has to get notarized and stuff? We've always had to get it notarized every time. You've always had to get it notarized every time. Pay the balance. Are you the one of the bitter winners? Yeah, you'll have to pay it within 10 days and come inside of the lease. Uh, I don't, okay, I don't know how Miss Wonsley does that. I thought she, you probably come up here to the office and do that. Do you know, or does she? 10 working days? Yes, I think so. We'll get back in that time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Unless y'all want to stay for the rest of the meeting, we'll give you a breath to exit. We'll y'all are welcome to stay. We'll it's continue a, It's on. the best show in town. Thank y'all. report uh, for our June meeting, the statement of cash flow, the ending fund balance you will see on your statement of revenue and expense in your packet uh, does reconcile to the ending cash flow balance as of May. Um, the estimated fund balance currently $29,968,417.67. Our MAEP collections uh, appropriations for April uh, was two million three hundred eighty-eight thousand five hundred seventy-three, which has been consistent for uh, FY twenty-two May. I'm sorry, I said April, but it's May. Uh, we ended up receiving twenty-five for the year twenty-five million nine hundred eighty-six thousand two hundred thirty-seven dollars for the year. In terms of our casino revenue, uh, we received the revenue on time. Uh, our April revenue received in May totaled $67,550.58. Uh, we have received our uh, May revenue as well, and it came up at $67,000 as well. Uh, that concludes my financial statement for June. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the financial aid office. Second. Officer. There's a motion and a second to accept the financial report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And we now go to G2. Okay. okay. Uh, G2, our bid results uh, for the FY22-23 year or 23 year fiscal year, uh, we want to start in order the mats and uniforms. Uh, it is the request for board approval for the bid results for them. Unifirst came in more uh, in every category except for the loss charges, uh, which is minimal for the district. Um, so if you look at your bid sheet, you will see uh, the three vendors that did bid on that item and Unifirst. 
one that did. Want to do these one at a time? That's or? fine. Okay. Sure. Can I get a get board action on the first, the mats and the uniforms, RFP number 22-23-02? I make a motion that we accept the uh, bid. Let me try to get the name of the company right. Universe. It's not in my, in my paperwork that way. Hold on. My, my paperwork didn't say. You should have it. I'm going up electronically, so if there's none in here electronically, you, you're out of luck. Um, I don't see it. Okay. See if it's that page right here. Here it is, right here. Go one more out. Universe. Okay. Make a motion that we accept RF 22 uh, for Unifirst. And the so, amount of the bid was? Does it have an amount or is it? Uh, Mats and uniforms, right? Yes. Doesn't have an amount. No, you're working down. Yeah. Okay. okay. Make a motion that we accept the RFP for, for Mats and uniforms for Unifirst. RFP 22 Motion second. All in favor? Question, uh, Mr. Question, Mr. Uh, yes. President. Yes. How, how long does the, uh, on the bids that, that we're accepting tonight, how long does the term go? Is it a year term? Uh, for the, yeah, the, for the uh, Nazi uh, uniform. For all of them? Uh, no, there's one that's three years. Which is? Uh, printing services. Printing service. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have uh, all in favor again, please. Oh, oh, I'm done. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, motion carries. All right, move janitorial services. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm requesting that the board approve the bid results for janitorial services. GCA Services Group was the only bidder. Uh, the fuel, I guess the fuel and labor costs extremely high, so um, other bidders did not participate, so that's the only bid we have. And their costs, you can see their matrix. Uh, How did that compare to last year? Pardon me. How did it compare to last year? Yeah, that's interesting. For the cost, it's the same. I mean, this is the same group, my understanding, but uh, they've gone up. Um, like everybody else? Yeah. How much did they go up? What was well, the Well, we're looking at probably about uh, $9,000. So about 10%. Yes. Yes. All right, what's the uh, pleasure of the board on janitorial services RFP 22-23-03? So move. Second. Motion and a second to accept that bid. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Now to print services. Okay. We do have a representative for print services here. Uh, for Toshiba, uh, they won the bid. Again, um, they came in lowest bid. Uh, and. The only other bidder you see on your sheet here. So really, um, and how does this compare to last to the previous contract? The previous came up at I think we're about two thousand or so more than the previous contract with Shishiba, so it's gone up as well. Make a motion we accept the RP for printing services twenty two twenty three oh four to for Toshiba. So Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, delivery propane services. Pest okay. Or pest, pest control. control. Pest, pest control, 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 I think is the next one. Okay. Uh, request board approval for RFP 22-2305 uh, for uh, pest control. Terminex. Terminex was the only bidder. Again, uh, the... the um, you know, all the area, I guess the fuel and labor cost, again, is it's affecting um, the bidders in, in the service area. And what did this why. one compare to previous year? Uh, I don't know. I can get that information. So we didn't have Terminax in, in previous years? This is uh, a new no, contract? No, not last year. This is a new contract. This is a new contract. Yes. Okay, 
say what's the pleasure of the board on pest control RFP 22-2305. I make a motion that we accept Terminex as the bid. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All right, now we're going to deliver propane, deliver propane services, RFP 22-2306. Okay, and I'll have to pull that one um, before, you know, we put them all out for bid, but this one uh, we did not receive anything, um, any bids on, so we will go back out uh, for that. Okay. So no action taken? No action taken. Do we need to take action to rebid it? or to? Okay. She can do it, yeah. Okay. You don't need to authorize that. Okay. okay. Do I need to state that as well? Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Move to the next uh, item. The next item is our reading curriculum and teacher training. As you see on your sheet, uh, Reading Horizon won that bid. Um, they met all of the criteria that was specified and was submitted for board of, uh, for our K through 12. <coughs> and the total, total cost. And this is, compares to how we did for last year? No, this is the first time we've had a comprehensive reading. Okay. Curriculum. There were two vendors, um, but Reading Horizon uh, met the criteria that was specified in the bid. Complete. So they won the bid. Okay, uh, what's the board action on reading curriculum RFP 222307? I make a motion that we approve the RFP, whatever those numbers were. I can't see them. What did okay. you say it was? 22. 2307. 22307. Make a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And uh, what are we on now? Chromebooks? Garbage. Garbage pickup. Oh, I don't have one of those. Uh, same yeah. thing with the garbage pickup. You don't have that one because. Um, Nobody bid? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we'll have to rebid that one. Put that one back out. I know a couple of people in Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> they did not. There's some trucks. I, at, I hear there's some trucks. I apologize. <laughs> there's some trucks at the airport. We can talk to them about. All right. Last item: Chromebooks and related accessories. All right. Um, again, same with supply. Uh, we had one bidder that did uh, meet the criteria for the quantity that we needed. Uh, the tablets and the uh, mouse, as you see on your uh, bid matrix sheet, and I, it has been suggested that we go back out to get the other accessories or the case because we probably can get it at a lower price. Uh, so we will want to do that piece as well. So your recommendation is, is not to accept this bid? No. The entire bid, yeah. Not no, you're you're wanting to accept it from the entire bid. For the Chromebooks right. and the warranty. And that's right. And the management software, but not the accessories. That's uh, correct. So we will remove line item three from this from this uh, award, right? That's correct. Line item three. Um, <clears throat> there are also uh, other accessories as well. They're not on here, and that's only because they're not in stock. So being that we had the 210 in quantity, it's hard to find those items that, you know, that, that are stopped. So we'll have to go out to do that as well. To, so to we're really only accepting well. Chromebook. The tablet and the, uh, the, warranty. the warranty. Okay. Which is? So not the mouse. And the mouse. And the okay. mouse and the wheel, yeah. What about the delivery so Delivery time? So it's it's line item one, two, and four? Is that, is that what we're doing? Right. That's correct. Okay, so if was I could there, get a... Was there a bid on... I don't have that in front of me. Is there a bid on three? So you, you're going to reject the bid on three? We will right? reject the bid on three for the case. Um, All right, so make, when you make that motion, just move to reject the bid and then <coughs> authorize to react because you didn't get any bids on re-advertise for, for that. All right, I make a motion <coughs> that we accept the bid or award the bid to CDI 
for line items one, two, and three, oh, and no. one. Two and four. Oh, excuse me, one, two, and four, and we reject three. Yes. Second. So, and authorize the advertising. Amen. And authorize the advertising. Authorize the advertising. Thank you. Amen. Coach, got a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, I'm sorry. Mr. Pratt, I just want to apologize. That, that attachment was not included in the packet. Um, I apologize for that. Um, and I apologize. I think I found some of it. But it I'm but sorry. I, it was a late admission. And I, I, I think I found some of it, but it was hard, it was hard to read. I found it. Was, it. All, this was hard to read, too. This was hard to read, too. All right, uh, G3 property insurance. Yeah. Can I make a point real quick? Yes. Um, in the future, this is not a criticism. It would help us if y'all would, uh, if we're doing multiple things like we did on these, y'all just spell out what you're recommending us do in your recommendation. Okay. I think you said which one to accept, but since we're, we're, we're rejecting some and approving some, if you have a recommendation and why, that would definitely help in the documentation. Sure. Okay. But I'm not. I'm not criticizing. I'm just, okay, it would help us probably move quicker next time. Sure. Okay. I think you have before you the property insurance and the insurance uh, document uh, for FY23 that will need uh, the approval of the board. this up we talked about this I'm gonna bring it up anyway yes. there was some uh, some language that had to do with some casino um, Riverview Casino and its parent company or Waterview excuse me casino and its parent company being listed as additionally insured in here we feel like that was due to the fact that their facility was used for some school items correct me if I'm wrong Christian or some, their facility was used and we had to add them as additionally insured on our policy. And Ms. Lewis has been gracious enough to tell me she's gonna make sure that if we're paying extra for them to be additionally insured on our policy, they get removed because we're not using that facility anymore. It may be a, just a drag over from a later time or earlier time, but I did notice it when I was reading this monster of a document today. And um, it was very, weird that Waterview Casino was showing up on our insurance policy. So, But I've asked her for clarity and she, she assures me that's going to be done. Yeah, that's got to be an old one. Because I don't know that that function is going to be used since I've been here. Yeah. Okay. And, and it happens. It, I mean, I, it happens all the time. So just make sure that we're not paying a rider for somebody sure. that we're not dealing with anymore. So I assume that someone did a... Um, did an audit or a validation for all the assets, like the trucks. We've added several new trucks that trucks came off, yes. were taken off. School buses that were that we yes, asset we, disposed of. We, right. we we're sure that this is like yes. you said. We're not paying for for insurance on something we don't have anymore. That's true. Yes. Okay. Uh, they were sent to the departments and they verified or confirmed those uh, things that were old were taken off and those that are new added. Okay. Yes. What's the pleasure of the board on the uh, property and insurance renewal that expires quickly so we can make action on it? Today. <laughs> make a motion that we approve the property insurance renewal proposal for FY 2023. So, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Uh, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Thank you. All right, we're now going to move to this. Um, Lengthy, lengthy consent agenda here. Get your money's worth today. Yep. Watch out, don't ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking at you, Jim. I'm sure. I, I mean, that was just, <laughs> that was in general. <laughs> I felt the dagger. All right. <laughs> oh, well, I got to get my pen out. I know, right? We're going to move wait, on to the consent Wait a minute, Jim, I got to get my pen warmed up. So I would like to, are there any items to be pulled? Mr. President? Yes, sir. Uh, you ready, Mr. Pratt? I'm, I'm good. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. Go uh, for it. 12. That would be, that would be H12. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
15. 8.15. Yes, sir. Uh, 17. 19. 24. 51, 52. Wait a minute. Somebody has. Yeah, I wrote. Not, no, not 52. 51. Okay. It was already circled. I got three different updates. Um, J2. J4. And I'm done, done. And I want to pull 31. H31. 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 31. Okay, is there any other items to be pulled? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, she wasn't on there. Yeah. I don't know. You think she's on there? She wasn't on my sheet. Was she on the Huh? Oh, she is? Okay. Because she told me she wasn't going to be. But okay. Yeah. Oh, that's groovy. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so, so you got to get out. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, so J1. Pull pull Which one is that? J1. 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 Have you seen it? Hold on. Okay. All right, to repeat, or to I, state I, the motion. I will state the, you may do it. Go for it. All right. We, a motion will be to approve the consent agenda as presented with the exception of H12, 16, 17, 15. 15. 15. Page 15. 15. 15, 17. 15, 17. What about 12? 15. 15. All in years. I know, right? That ain't even my What about 16? No, he kept 16. Okay. Who kept 16? 17, 19, 24, 31, 50. Yep. 51. 51 and 50. And 51. 51. J1, 2, and 4. Then J1, 2, and 4. Somebody quickly say that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh -huh. Page 31. Yep, yep, yep. 61 and 31. Yep. And and one, two, and four under Jack. One, right? two, and four okay. two under Jack. Yeah, one, two, and four. Oh, oh yeah, one, two, and four. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. One, two, and four. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sturgeon, say the will. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Point of, point of clarification, and I'm not against anyone getting extra money. Let me just make that note up front. I'm not against anyone getting extra money. But I do have a question. If I read this correctly, we have already approved everyone except the additions that were in bold um, on this sheet. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So my question is, are we, the money remains constant? Is it, has the money gone up? Was the 115, did we approve that at the last board meeting or has the money gone up with the extra people that have been included? Some of them. Yes, ma'am. So the money actually went down. Money went down. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. That's, I just wanted to make sure. And, and, and has it already started? Yes, it started June 6th. So it, it, oh, it started. Okay. But the money went down. That's, that's more important than when it started at this juncture. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, H12, please. Second. Second. Got a motion in three seconds. <laughs> uh, you ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Uh, I'll oppose. Mr. Sturgis, uh, page 15. That did carry, by the way. Yes, sir. Page 15. I'm working out of a box, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This is for the bus purchases. I see. We, I, I know the CE 300 have been. It, it's been erased. I, I, I get that. Uh, yes. And it's 13 buses. Of the 13 buses, 
does it include special need buses? Ms. Taylor. Good evening. Um, no, sir, that does not include special ed buses, okay. handicap buses. No, sir. Okay. Uh, are these electric buses? No, sir. They're regular um, diesel buses. Okay. And how much is the cost for each bus? If you give me a few seconds, I can let you know there, whatever it is on state contract. Okay. And uh, is it, or will there be air conditioning? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're also purchasing upgrade, are you also purchasing other upgrades for other buses? It mentions AC on here, but are you, is this just for the buses you're buying or are you buying some upgrade kits for older buses? No, sir, that's just for the buses we're purchasing. We're okay. not upgrading. Okay. And what's the capacity the of the buses? 71 passengers. 71. Yes, sir. Okay. And these funds have been set aside for you? Once you give yes, me, sir. Okay, once you give me the total amount. Well, how many, I mean, the cost and then the total amount, please. Yes, sir. Are we waiting on the total? Is that what we're waiting on? Uh, yes, sir, the, 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 the amount. Well, we're still going to have to approve this once. Right or not? Sir? This is seeking permission to go out to bid for purchase. Right. So are, is, we're still going to come back and she's going to tell us what the price is at the next meeting. And we're going to have to approve it. Do you want to wait on that? Just bidding out. Permission to bid. Just, just bidding out. We're not on buying it. them right now. Oh, okay. 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 That's perfect then. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ms. Taylor to go seek permission for bids for 13 buses. Second. So, motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Sturgis, uh, H17. 17. We're about to hire you an assistant. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, MDE, uh, I'm sure Brian knows 10 times more than I do on this. I just I did have a question on it though, and, and it's probably simple that Brian probably should I should have asked you, but is is there a cost to this data no. sharing? No cost. No. So this is this is laying the foundation for something we've been needing for a long time, and that's a state operated uh, operation system. So once this MSIS data shares, then that'll be forthcoming. And I've heard a little bird that we may have somebody being able to put some pressure there. So, so we, we've shared before? We currently shared the same set of data with MDE already. It's just this gives us an extension of permission to share this data with a new contractor of MDE so that they can create a new updated system that performs better for us. So will it help us as far as uh, data being breached? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion we accept H17, please. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. H19. H19. <clears throat> Okay. In, in our package here of the 56 items that we have, which I'm pretty excited about the percentage of pulls. If you if you if you you know okay. distributed based on the end count there, you don't 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 get it. Thank you. 
I've noticed that we have had several schools to um, use the money from the federal government for reading and math. And this one says this is a computer-based program, monitoring program for reading and math from K through 12. I'm going to do what I shouldn't do is assume that the, it's for all schools, K, or with the schools that are K through 12. And, and I'm, I'm asking two questions into one. They, they're actually using their own money to uh, purchase the same thing, it appears. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, Mr. Sturgis, to your question. Um, this particular program goes along with what we call our multi-tiered system of supports. It's required by NDE. What it does is you can think of it as a, tr as a triangle in which 85% of our children will fall in tier one, and that's what we call general instruction. Okay? You have another percentage, about roughly 10% is what we call tier two, and then we have about 5% in tier three. The problem here sometimes in education is that our triangle gets inverted and our top becomes heavy. That tier two and tier three feeds into exceptional education, child fine and special ed. Uh, in terms of being equitable, this program will allow us to function at the district level looking at and targeting those children. And our ultimate goal is to keep them, if at all possible, from ending up into that special education track by intervening. And in this case, interventions uh, imply that these things are done in addition to what's done in that classroom. And they can't be provided by the same uh, right. software data. So mm -hmm. when you move out of, it, it shifts to instructional level and it has to be a different uh, solution. So yes. there's no redundancy if that was... Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly right. That's yeah, what I was no asking. No redundancy. And this will allow us, the difference, the major difference in what we do in the regular schools, we're testing standards. Yep. This program will allow us to test a skill. That's a right. skill may be decoding. Uh, a skill may be knowing seven times six, but the standard may be utilizing those properties. And see, that's where children fall within those gaps. So this program will allow us to test those children, to track these, and this will be able to follow them K all the way up to high school, and it is our hope that we'll be able to close the gap to uh, decrease the numbers of children that are getting referred and get everyone back so that, that triangle is uh, right side up. So this would, would, would you, could I consider this like the lower 25 percent? The lower 25, yeah. yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome, sir. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve H19, please. Second. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. H24, Mr. Sturgis. Yes, sir. That's you again. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, have we, um, have we used uh, these people before? We have. The reason for the switch, uh, Mr. Sturgis, uh, I think it's, it, it bodes our children well to practice as they will play, so to speak. And I know Coach will appreciate that reference there. Um, this, uh, the second quote is lower, but the first quote allows our children to practice with, with the Desmo calculator. That's the calculator that they'll see at the end of state testing. So my thought was that if they're exposed and practicing with this test to the teacher's formative, as well as on the district benchmark, that when it comes to state testing, they will be familiar with it as opposed to seeing it. Gives us a better opportunity. And that's the reason for the switch to $4,000 is because, quote, one, they can provide that, quote, two does not have that. And that's the difference in the price. But this is a renewal price. And this Desmo Calculate feature is a new feature that they brought in this year. So you'll be able to use that on the test? They can use that all the time so they'll be familiar with it. So when it comes to state testing, it won't be the first time they're seen. Oh, wow. So I just felt that that would be, the $4,000 would be a better investment on the front end so that they're prepared and, and ready for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion we approve H24, please. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. H51. 
31. That's me. Oh, okay. I skipped it. Um, Sorry. I just have a question about it. it it's a thousand dollars a day, and I had already asked you to question. It's 27 teachers that get the benefit of it for a total of forty thousand dollars. My question is: Is it says the money comes out of school funds? Is that district funds? Is that yes, sir? That is that. It didn't. Say, well, mine didn't say yes, sir. So. No, it didn't. Not say yes. Is it district? Okay, yeah, it just says. Did it, is it district funds? Is it South Park funds? Where's where? where it just says school funds, so I, I, I'd like to know. It, it is district funds that's allocated to South Park for professional development. So, to their local so it's your it's your monies. Okay, that was all. I wasn't real sure how it. Yep. Okay, I make a motion to accept 31. Second. Sure. Motion to second to accept H31. All Thank in favor? You. All in favor? Uh, uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Now H51. 51. 51. Actually, this is for the attorney. I guess we don't have to pay him extra on this one since he's in the board meeting. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. I'm just a joke, my brother. He's not joking. I know. I guess this is all I had was a piece of paper. Did, I guess I, I was just asking, what is it? Yeah, that's, uh, we, there's a claim that's been made, and, and part of that, it's, it's employee-related. I don't want to get too much there. We need to get an executive session. Employee-related claims have been made, and the request has been made for us to accept service on behalf of the district, uh, oh. rather than going through a process uh, that would require service, and then possibly, depending on the circumstances, uh, that you could have to pay for that service call. So it's, it's a formality and if we need to discuss the particular matter uh, we need to do that in the second session. Gotcha. I'd like to make a motion we approve um, H51 please. So motion in the second. I. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion carries. Alright. Second. 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 Sally will you excuse yourself? Okay we're moving on to J1 personnel recommendations and separations. What's the pleasure of the board? J1. Need a motion? Make a, yeah, make a motion. We approve J1. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Sure. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. You can ask her to come back in if you want to get all wheel, please. Mr. Sturgis, J2. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, J2. Could you just put your fingers in your ear? Uh, yeah, I make you leave. Uh, I make you leave and go behind uh, the closed door. At last month, I think, Miss Lewis, I need to maybe need to. Oh, wait, let me see. No. Okay, here's what I have. On the academic interventionist under the Title I budget, is there one at every school or just when the school requests a, I'll just call it an AI because it's a tongue tire for me. Under, under Title I, every position is unique to that school because it's based on their needs and their data, and the school sets forth that Title I plan. So I can't say that everyone has it, but if they have Title I funds, then if that's what they need, they could request that in the amount. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Gotcha. Title I gets, you know, I don't touch Title I. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion we approve our uh, 8J2, please. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion carries. J4. J4. I don't know who I need to address, Dr. Little or Ms. Hill, or probably Mr. Sims. You throw it at me. <laughs> okay. I see ESSA funds will be used for this. I get that. The ESSA funds are being used for a whole lot of things. 
About $35 million worth. All right. And we got a $46 million budget. I understand that. Okay. So if I am correct, how many SROs do we already have full time? That's five including you. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Um, the additional eight SROs. Can you tell me why they are needed? I I can. Okay. You, you can. You want you want to hear from him or me? Uh, it doesn't matter, sir. Well, one of the things that we did, uh, you know, safety and security is always fundamental, and without and a doubt, with the uh, I guess rash. I don't, I don't know that. that you know, we, we did a we did a hard reboot and look back over our processes, which you know we're pretty sound with our response, um, and we were asked to consider some of the things that we might could add and do differently. Uh, quite frankly, when we did our safety audit, uh, we think our plans are incredible. Uh, they're they're very responsive. They're incredibly comprehensive. The only thing that it doesn't do is provide uh, an SRO at every facility, which is a Train and we do have security at some places, but we don't have an SRO now. You know, Dwayne's very flexible. He's out and about. He goes to different schools. He uh, and then we have a dedicated one for our high schools and our, our junior highs, but we don't have them for every building. Uh, in the event where we had to, uh, and we hope we never need to, by the way, uh, but in the event we need a responder, we have one on site at every school. So uh, that's that's the reason. Okay. Um, with that comes cars. With that comes guns. With that uh, comes training. Um, are we going to purchase cars? Because that's, that's going to be added to it. How much are we going to pay each SRO, then you have to add 15% more to what that is for their retirement. I just don't see it here, and and I've been, and again, I agree with you. Safety is the utmost important. Uh, we have safety here tonight. Thank you, Chief Sims. Um, but I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the the dollar amount when the money runs out. Then we've got nurses on, that's the money. We're going to have SROs on this money. Then you're going to look at the budget. Then we just gave everybody a raise. And then um, if, if my mind serves me correctly, and I trust me, I've been wrong. Just ask my wife. I've been wrong a lot of times in my life. This time we don't have to dip into our cash stabilization fund. But, and please correct me when I go wrong, next year there is a possibility that we may have to cut services. There is a possibility. So now we're talking about all of this that we're doing, but I, I, I don't know how much all of this is going to cost. Do, do, do we have any idea with the cars? Are we going to buy new cars? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, if, if this is approved, I think Yes, sir. So, how can I approve something? I mean, just me personally. How can I approve something if I don't know if we're going to get cars? Are they going to walk to work? Are they going to carry their own guns? I think what you're saying is, I don't put words in the mouth, is that you're asking us to hire the individuals, but we're not approving you to buy vehicles. Oh, absolutely. They would have to come back to us to approve. But, but, so, these people, like a teacher, drive their own car to work. A couple, couple things. One, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the benefits and individuals are within this, the budget that was presented with the additional million six left over. So hopefully we'll continue to be conservative with those dollars and now openly stated, this is a three-year position. Mm, uh, the yes. board will have to make a decision at the end of the time where an answer uh, is no longer with us. Uh, and there's a strong rumor. Two years. Two years. Uh, and, and hopefully ESSER 4 will come and, and save us all. So uh, with that being said, you're right, they do have to have equipment. One of the right. things we apply for annually is a COPS grant. 
uh, that COPS grant covers uh, our cost of outfit with uniforms and gear. Which At this point, current. we've had no discussion about cars uh, to to provide for the SRA. Even with that, you know, let's say let's say they don't have people. One of the things that we do. SROs that which I do it on a daily basis right now because of the elementary do not have vehicles to transport because they don't have an SRO. That's what I would do. So you know, that's, so that's where we get on that for us vehicles. They will get transported, but to your point, will they possibly have to drive to work if that's an option if vehicles are not included? Okay. So the guns. Yes, sir. We 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 provide cars to the six that we have now. Correct. Correct. And we provide guns for the six we have now, correct? Correct. And we provide the equipment just in case the bulletproof goes through. I stand behind you, correct? Correct. So will they have this? Besides the cars, will they have the same? Um, All or with equipment, absolutely. Now the cars is on hold. Oh yeah, without the cars, I mean. But the equipment is what? the equipment, absolutely. The body armor, the guns, right. the whole nine yards. But it, it, I mean, that's what. What the superintendent was saying goes in that COPS grant. Correct. That we have uh, we per SRO on the MCOPS grant, that's about $10,000. Okay, per so we got 10000 per, right? Per. So we got 50000 this last, 60000 the last time, this last that time. That has not been uh, awarded at this time. You have not? It has been submitted, but it has been awarded every year up to Correct. now. It just hasn't been awarded. Coach, no. yes. you see it. Yes, sir. <coughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. If the eight that you have, the they, six. they can be stationary at the school that they are out, yes. that they're at, right? I mean, yes. at the elementary. Yes. They don't need to be necessarily in a, in a patrol car. Yeah, it's not correct. So, they're not so building the way stuff. I set up is now, all the SROs has at least three schools, all right. and they'll go check on those schools. Right. But that, that will eliminate the leaving the building unsecured, they'll okay. check on the, right. the elementary school. Okay. And one of the things that you look at when you talk about the need for SRO is that if you look at Redwood, you look at South Park. Okay. That's, seven to, that's seven to ten minutes response time. And yeah. all research will show you that between seven and ten minutes, God forbid, that's right. a, and with a high capacity magazine, you're looking at a tragedy. Right. Yeah. And most of the, the doors should be locked, correct? Yes. Okay. So if the doors are locked, locked then they come through the front door, correct? Correct. Okay. So the training would be needed within the 24 months they're here, correct? Yes. Okay, so they're, even, they're not even here, but maybe 18 months, 15 oh, months yeah. out of the 24? Say that again. I, say they, I guess they're basically on the, on, the, on the property, 15 of the 24 months they're here, do, do the training, or is training, yeah, not in, is training after they go to, to uh, once they finish the school they're in? Yes, where the training works is this. If they are hired, you have up to one year to do an SRO basic class. And that class is usually done in the summer, so therefore you won't, you will not pull them away from the school during the day. And some classes they are actually offering them virtual. Virtual, okay. So yeah. the, um, Security that we, well, I won't say see, they are security, but they don't have, they don't tow guns. They are not. Yes, okay. Right. Do we need them anymore? So now you're triple double, you're tripling your security, correct? Well, you know, once again, we have to go back and we, uh, Dr. McGee and I have been discussing, but upon if, if the SROs are approved or whatever, we'd have to go back. I can't really say that they're not a 100% be eliminated, we might have to just downside because there's another piece in there with athletics. But I'm, I'm speaking of the schools now, so we wouldn't need them in the schools. I can't, we'll definitely have to reevaluate. But you'll have the eight, eight where all, you'll have a security, you'll have a SRO at all the schools, so why would but, you need, need me sitting in the front door? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't make that decision just by myself. We have to go back. No, no, no. I, 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 I guess I'm the not. Attorney, thanks right. for stepping. Once we start getting, we're getting right. Right. Over security issues at the executive session, so we need to get into point well taken, sir. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. In other words, we don't want to give out our secrets. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Okay, I, 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 I will cease here then, and 
I, I, anyway, I'm just curious about the the the, the costs. And I know it's the money is there now. I get that. I, I'm, I, we, we're spending, and which we should, we're spending money because they gave it to us and told us if we don't spend it, they're they going to take it back from us. I get that. I get that. I'm, I'm not, I'm just the, the length and the the amount and, and what we're going to have to to provide is, is, is my ultimate goal right here. Okay. I'm, I'm done, done with that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Sims. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Superintendent. I make a motion that we approve J4. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No, Sturgis. Motion carries. Coach, you did say aye, right? Okay. All right, we're going to move on to Dr. McGee. Podium is yours, sir. Oh, yeah. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, uh, last month, um, I provided you with the legislative update for the uh, board policies. And a few of those we have to make, uh, you all have to make a decision about. One that deals with the monthly payroll, either um, make a decision on a monthly or bi monthly. And those policies are CEE. CGA, DJC, and CBA. Those all deal with payroll. And then also um, about the medical campus. Um, we have to make a decision if we're, gonna, if we're gonna allow that on campus or not. So those are the two biggies that we'll need to, to make a decision on. And uh, I'd like to make a recommendation. Or, uh, we, we've done extensive investigation in all of these areas. Uh, first of which is the payroll uh, process monthly or bi-monthly. Uh, there, there is not a district that we have spoken to that is taking this on. Uh, there are additional costs that are uh, a part of that. Uh, it would be my recommendation that we stay with the monthly. Board can you know, direct us to do differently on that. Um, and if I can go just address two and three together uh, with the uh, medications. Um, we currently don't administer, uh, you know, uh, prescription drugs at that rate. We've talked with all of our nurses, uh, with the particular medical cannabis being a, a part of that. We have no capacity to know how that's gonna be done at this point. So my recommendation, and until we have more guidance, um, and we also uh, reached out to multiple districts and we don't have anybody that's not doing anything other than saying it's not allowed, and that's for adults and kids. So that's clarity on what I would like for us to do, but y'all are welcome to uh, direct us and. Uh, we'll we'll take whatever uh, y'all would like, whatever pleases the board. Uh, but you do need to make a decision for one, two, and three, so we can update our policies accordingly. Question on one: Have um, the, the 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 advantage of one doing it bi-monthly is it's got, there's going to be the additional cost. Have we been provided what the cost would be to know? Because but even though those are cost, it does help our teachers out. I mean, it's they're getting paid twice a month versus once a month and. You know, new teacher starts, they work 30 days before they get the first paycheck. Um, so do we have a cost associated with, so we would understand that by choosing the option to do a bi-monthly payroll, what that cost would be to the district? I'm, I got my gym hat on right now. Uh, Cassandra, I know we looked at it, you're basically running two payroll departments at this point. So you would take the people that have to do the work that's currently in their work and double that. So uh, we talk about extending the finance department by three or four employees at a minimum. Yeah, and you get into the time of this of getting the paperwork in. Uh, you got 24 periods versus 12. So you're, you know, uh, as of now, we get into the rut where we can't get the paperwork in and signed on time in order to get the people paid for the month. So how many people we have currently that process payroll? Uh, two. Directly related to payroll. Okay. So, because um, I've run payroll before, I don't like payroll. Um, but um, are we automated? All automated for payroll? All your hours are from a time clock. Yes, it is. And your salary, your teacher's salary is preloaded. So when you go to process payroll, if you're doing a biweekly or a monthly, you're basically pushing a button. Those are all set up to just 
pay based on that period, correct? No. <laughs> uh, you know, because currently, you know, again, we run into uh, situations where we can't get the paperwork in on time, and then that, that uh, process or the hand hey, what, scan. What kind of paperwork? Uh, in you terms of signatures for timesheets, um, those things. Uh, that we have to call the departments or call the schools to get that uh, process. Uh, also with the hand scan, if it doesn't work properly, then there's a manual, a manual process to do that. So, um, again, you know, you run into... Uh, those type of issues and uh, the additional cost that it would take to run those payrolls. So everything. You know, so the one thing, I mean, the, one of the biggest things I hear from teachers <laughs> is the fact that you know, the hardships are that they're paid once a month. I mean, that's that's one of the things I hear from them, and it would make it a lot easier on them to be able to pay twice a month. But I don't know that I'm getting a clear indication of what that cost is, so that we can determine for, as a board. We want to take on that cost to allow and relieve a little bit of the burden to our to our teachers and our, our staff by having a, a bi-weekly pay, payroll. And I've worked for companies, the company I work for, 100,000 employees, we process payroll weekly. I mean, you train people to get in that rhythm of what it is, and you also um, coach people who are not turning in timesheets properly on the proper process. I mean, it's, it's doable. But I don't know what the cost is. Can I ask, why did the uh, why did the Senate give us this option, or even give us? Because people we, complained about it. That, so that reason, exactly. That, okay. You have a lot of people complaining that once a month's not enough time to get paid. I got you. Okay. So a new teacher or or a teacher that moves into the district, kind of, they could have come from another district, or they they basically have to work thirty days to get paid, and they already don't make a lot of money. No district in the state does by weekly. No, 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 because they just approved this law. Right. They none, couldn't none before. That we, none that we talked. They to. couldn't before now. So it's not a fair statement right. to say that's none do it. You're you're right. None are doing it this upcoming school year that we spoke. To. Okay, but that's just because the law was passed. Everyone's mm -hmm. trying to figure this out. So I think that's it, that's irrelevant. Uh, I think it's important that we consider it, but that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> I believe I'm the only one in the room that have went through the, the uh, by two week payoff in schools. It's it, it's 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 going to be chaotic in, in a lot of things because unless you hire more people, you don't have to hire more. Oh people. no, no, and that's why I was and, asking uh, what the cost and, was. And we talk about now. We talk about and that's no extra money. <laughs> that's that's our money, exactly. you know, and. Uh, it, you know, I would I would want to be out front with that one. You know, that that's a that's going that can be a, a, a headache with these. Uh, Have anyone here? Scans. I process payroll for a company that was seven hundred employees. Me and two other people. It's not hard. You put processes in place. You have deadlines with payroll when time cards have to be submitted, and you and you and you get them in, and you process payroll. I, I personally have processed payroll. Has anyone here processed payroll? Okay. For set for seven hundred people, it was not hard. It was a lot of work, but it was not hard. But my point is, that's the one comment the teachers make to me. I'd ask everyone on this board, if y'all decide you don't want to entertain this, to go ask every teacher you see. With a, wouldn't it be a lot easier on them as a hardship not to get paid once a month, but to get paid every two weeks? I would, I would beg you to, to ask that question to your teachers. But Miss Lewis, if we if we made the decision to go. Um, Bi-monthly, would you be prepared to do that with the school year starting in August, or is this no. not good? So we would not be prepared to do that. And what would think, be? Yeah. Can I finish? What would be the soonest you would be prepared to do? Well, that? you want to start a payroll cycle in the first of the school year, which is right. a July year, right? You know, July, and it was just passed. So, uh, you know, I would rather wait to see what other schools. Are doing and going through that cycle as well um, but again you don't want to start midstream you want to start in a, you know, uh, the first of the fiscal year so the soonest not this, not, not so this. the soonest we could do it would be 23 24 Four school year, year. would yes. be so if we made the decision to vote on this it wouldn't even be for this common calendar no. school year no because you have to put those measures in place yeah. So that would give you a year to find people and to train people and to put, if we had to buy new computer systems or whatever, 
if you had to get different kind of swipe cards, whatever the systems are, teaching the people in the school buildings how to operate, and for your people in your office, you're yes. saying it would take a calendar year to do that. Yes. yes. And Ms. Lewis, Ms. Lewis, Coach made a very valid point, and you would, then you would have to tell us how many persons that you would need, what type of computer system that needs to be updated, upgraded. Um, so now you, you, you're talking dollars now and not cents mm -hmm. on it. And it, the superintendent had mentioned that and then you, you just get bigger back there in the back. With, with, and again, I understand what Mr. Pratt is saying because uh, my mom and dad, um, 50 years plus in the school system, would once a month. Okay. So I, I get the, now when I worked at the bank, I got paid twice, which was good. I get that. I get that. But some people are accustomed to once a month, some people are accustomed to twice a month. I understand everything that's being said here tonight. My only problem is, is the budget. The budget is going to get, uh, and excuse me to my all of my English teachers, it's going to get busted. And that's the wrong English, but I'm just going to use it where everybody can understand what I'm saying. And then we're going to go in the red. We go from the black to the red. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we've been in the red before, and it wasn't a pretty scene. You're holding your breath to see if you can pay the next bill. So I just hope this board take in consideration. Uh, yes, we, we've got money right now running out of every ear we can think about. We can do whatever we want to do at this particular time. But there's, there will come a time when Judgment Day hits, in my opinion. Now, I've been around money long enough to know. I look at my bank account and know that it's come judgment time. So with that, thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Lewis, if you will, just inform us and just let us know as things progress over the next year. If there's some seminar you've been to and you have a better idea, you know, we'll always entertain it. I'd like to make a motion that we continue on the once a month payroll. But in my motion, I would also like to have um, um, Ms. Lewis, give us some information, give us maybe if we can look at a dollar amount, what it would cost us, and a pro the process, what it would have to be, so that if we want to reconsider this, that we have the, all of that information in front of us, because obviously we're on the late end of trying to make this change. If, if you're saying it can't even happen until the 2023-24 school year, then we need, we've got a year to get all that information so that if we chose to change, that we are prepared to make that change in July of 2023. And that was my initial question too, is when the whole process came up, we were interested to get an investigation. I said, can we, I, I know we're not ready. Right. I know we can't get this. Can we start in December? She goes, uh, no. So, I mean, I, I'd like that information, you know, way before July. So, I mean, I think that that information needs to come to us in December. And then the board could make a motion to, you know. Could you amend your motion to say that we revisit this in December? In December. With the information. Yeah, well, that's Cur what I was getting yeah, at. Currently, we're going to stay at 30 days right. or every month, but that we have that information in December, we'd make a decision so they could plan. Right, because if that gives a decision you, to exactly. Change. That's, what, that's what I'd like to say. As part of that information, could you also provide us the current schedule of what a payroll process is, when your people submit stuff, when it has to be approved? How long it takes you to process payroll? I'd like to see that, please. All right, so there's a motion Second. on the floor to stay with the monthly payroll as it is and receive an update in December as to any changes that might happen. Along with that, uh, provide this board with our current procedure and policy when it comes to processing payroll. Is that, did I get yes. that right? What right. it would cost all the systems that would have to come in place. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, that motion carries. So we have items two Doc, and three. I make a motion that we do not approve medical marijuana in our school district. 
second. I have a motion and a second. That we continue with the narcotics program that we already have. All right, I have a motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And number th item three. Is that in the item? Yes, okay, sir. so that takes care of everything? Yeah, take it takes care of adults okay. and students, and we'll take that uh, third option of both of those po suggested policies uh, to prohibit. All right, so we are now at, where are we? Policy L1. review. Yes, and this is just review um, and information right now. But, but on our school facilities rental policy, under section six, under under rent, rental charges, the school board will renew and revise if necessary these rate schedules at the first meeting in July of every year. So um, I wanted to make sure you, are, you guys had this, and if there are any changes or recommendations, um, we will come back to you with the, those recommendations and the justifications if 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 needed. Um, but as you can see right now, we we have. Um, a schedule for those rentals, the cafeteria, the gymnasium. Um, Does that schedule also include um, if there's a cleaning, like if someone uses our facility and we have to have custodial staff come through and clean again? Does it include? I mean, you're renting the space, but it also right. needs to be returned Insurance back to security, use. Janitorial. Yeah, the I'll return to use. Ahead. It needs to be ready, like we're ready to start school the next day, and we shouldn't have to incur that cost, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All yes, then. I make a motion that we go into closed session to set the agenda. May I ask one question, uh, Ms. Bullard, please? Yes. Before we, no, 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 you didn't see me. I apologize. I was trying to wait till they got through talking before. I, I apologize, but I, I do have. A, I just have one question on the on the medical marijuana, uh, what we just voted for. By law, if someone has a seizure, whatever, whatever. If we have if we have a student that has to have it at this juncture, what we just voted on, they cannot have that like on the school ground. Then they can have any other prescription in our building. It, it, uh, am I there's correct? There's an exception that has always come to our office, and it, so it there is a possibility. But what we always a possibility. This board can make decisions. So I, 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 I just want to get clarification on when somebody asks if let's let's say their special needs child needs this. To survive, so they can so they can provide it to them before they come on campus. No, um, um, but then, but, but they may long. need it during the day because you know uh, they they some people will act up during the day. But I agree with what you're saying. Use it during the day or before or after is is a is a very um, uh, way of a good way of saying that we we hope that happens. But you know there are people like me who will cut up in class. And so I'm just, I just want to make sure that we, I understand. So when somebody asks me in the grocery store, I want to make sure to say that the answer is no. Prohibited, Period. Prohibited unless it shows back up at this board. Because based on what you just voted on, you're the only people that have the authority to do anything other than prohibited. But I will say this. We're going to keep our, just, just like the double payroll thing, we're talking about something that, just occurred. We don't even have to, the dispensaries or anybody authorized. I don't right. even know who's going to prescribe all this stuff. But what we'll do as we get more information, we'll inform this board. We'll bring stuff back to y'all. Okay. Uh, and y'all have the opportunity to change. But at this point, we don't even have any mechanism to. So at this I mean, point, we no. already have a narcotics policy, and sure. this just follows the same guidelines as the narcotics policy. Yeah. I, I, okay. I just want to make sure. I just That's I want to get clarification. That's all I need. Thank you. And real quick, Jim. Just so also though we have. There might be someone who needs other medication other than medical marijuana that we're not allowing them to be administered on school already too that's correct, so i mean that's correct. that's an argument not an argument but something else to point out jim is someone asked us is that you know we have a policy for administering uh you know medication and basically it doesn't prohibit it it, it prohibits any type of medication from being administered on school grounds not just medical marijuana okay uh, we just we just don't have enough information to make a, a okay, conscious I, I, decision right now. Okay, I just want to make I, I, I just need clarification, sir. You're good. You said. I make a motion that we go into closed session and set the agenda second. for executive session. Second. Second. We got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion is approved.